If you are looking for perfect artistic gifts for your loved ones when you travel, then check the elegant handcrafted ceramics at the House of Raw. Use the code TSMOSH and save on your first purchase. Details in the show notes of this episode. Welcome to season three of Travel Stories with Marsh. Every episode, I share travel stories from some amazing travel enthusiasts who take us on fascinating journeys around the world. Together, we hope to entertain and inspire you to explore the world in new and exciting ways and hopefully remind you of some of your own great travel experiences. On the episode today, I have someone who is an expert in the field of travel and calls herself a global citizen. Sophia Tamang is a Dubai-based travel industry strategy specialist with an impressive track record of over a decade. On the podcast today, we will talk about culture and people and how travel has been transformational in so many people's lives. Welcome to the podcast, Sophia. I mean, I just started by talking about how travel is transformational. And for me, this journey of the podcast itself has been so rewarding. For starters, I get to meet incredible people like yourself, who I now call friends. And, you know, and then I get to go on these incredible travel journeys with everyone. But with you, you know, I want to start talking about something that you're famous for, destination building. You know, you have got a lot of destinations. I mean, you, you made a lot of destinations famous. You brought them to the limelight and increased traffic to those places from this region. Tell us about those places and why you thought it was important to bring them to the limelight. When I started off my journey in travel, I started off thinking, wow, like, you know, I don't know that if I can never travel the world, Mm. but I want to see the world through my client's eyes. I felt like some of the destinations did not get enough limelight and they really are worthwhile to, Mm. you know, like to experience and visit. And destinations were a way of me experimenting and seeing what will work, what will not work Mm. in this in this part of the world, but I'm so happy to say that I truly lived my passion, Mm. which is for people and culture and travel Mm. through all of these, uh, you know, destination marketing campaigns that I did. Mm. So it was very interesting for me. So what comes to your mind? I mean, there have been so many destinations that, uh, of course, uh, were brought to the limelight by you. But what comes to mind specifically, uh, which particular destination did you think was was such a Mm. joy? Challenging destination Mm. for me would have been where I really, really took a big risk Mm. in introducing this along with my team was that was Russia. I mean, like people did not think of Russia as a tourist destination. And how many years back was this? This was 2015, 2016. And like people were not really doing Russia for touristic purposes. It was only for business visits and that's all. Mm. I think the whole perception of Russia changed. Mm. It wasn't thought as uh, a closed off destination. Mm. It wasn't thought of as... Um, are we going to be safe there? Mm. Mm, are we going to have language barriers? Yeah, and those are very important questions when that you yes. ask when you travel. They, clients didn't have to worry about halal food because mm. you know by then, the 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 introduction of halal tourism was something that I had already brought in. Mm. You just mentioned halal tourism mm. and that's something also that I wanted to talk to you about because you were one of the first people who actually brought in halal tourism to this part of the world yes. again how did that really change this whole uh, you know world of traveling from here you know there's a big market of um, you know muslim mm. clients mm. Uh, not only locals but you know expat arabs uh, indians and all the all yeah. the muslims yeah. from across the world and i said this would really solve their problem yeah. and that would give them a lot of ease to yeah. be able to go and visit a destination like uh, Europe, yeah. especially Europe, because 
it's so hard over there. Literally yeah. went to every single halal restaurant yeah. and we'd actually go and uh, ask them, sure, please show us your certification. Mm. Would you be open to groups? Uh, and we literally went and we tried the food. We saw if it would fit our clientele and then we actually but brought that But it's so crucial, right? Nobody talks about... I mean, we talk about culinary journeys, you know, people travel for food, I travel for food, but, you know, food also is so important for everybody in the way you eat, what yes. you eat, and nobody really gives that much emphasis to something like halal food. And that is very crucial for a very large part of the society that we live in. So, you know, it was so important that that was being addressed and of course, it was a huge success. Now, coming to the first question of the podcast, where are you taking us on a journey today? I'd like to take you on a journey out of this world. Okay. Like really, really out of this world, literally. Okay, another planet. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> okay, let's Would you talk like about to? <laughs> let's hear it. I'd like to talk about space travel. Okay. That there's so much potential in space travel and a lot of, a lot of H&Is and a lot of adventure seekers are actually already pursuing it and have been beyond the Earth's atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And that's so interesting for mm -hmm. me because I noticed that there are not a lot of experiences out there, but there are two different kinds of experiences. One is called suborbital, mm -hmm. which means that you just get off the Earth and you're able to see the whole globe mm. and then you come back in. Okay. And then there's another one where you basically are able to go into the lower orbit mm -hmm. and basically you can you can experience, you know, being away, super away from Earth and be able to see it just like how we saw it in the movies. Oh, so there are different levels to this. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. And I was like, okay, maybe the level which goes beyond... Uh, goes into the second one uh -huh. would perhaps be very expensive right now. Mm. But what I see is a lot of potential within um, the suborbital, which is perhaps really great as a once in a lifetime uh, experience for adventure seekers. Right now, Virgin mm. Galactic is mm. doing it. And there's another company called mm -hmm. Blue Origin which is owned by, of course, Jeff Bezos. Mm -hmm. You said that there are different levels to doing it. There's a suborbital level and another level. But is it just for H&Is or is it, I mean, how affordable will it be for the normal person out there? I think in the next 10, 8 to 10 years, mm -hmm. it will definitely come down in terms of pricing. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now, a, a flight across, like just outside uh, the Earth's atmosphere, yeah. which is with Blue Origin, uh, would cost you somewhere about two hundred to two hundred fifty thousand mm. dollars. <laughs> That's a lot of money. Mm. So you know, but you, you're of course talking about um, this journey as an experience that you know, as a travel expert, that you would highly recommend uh, that people do, right? But what part of the journey do you think will be so enriching for people? to experience and why do you highly recommend it when you get out of the atmosphere and you look at when you look at earth mm. and you see how insignificant you are yeah. as a human being it really changes your perspective and you mm. think to yourself oh my god that beautiful blue ball is my home yeah and i want to do more for it I i've heard this happen um, to a lot of astronauts and to a lot of um, civilian tourists mm. who've actually been mm. outside mm. the Earth's yeah. atmosphere. Yeah, and also I think today's world, people it's all about experiences. And I think we know that by now with everybody talks about it, it's like the new big word out there. And what a better experience than going on space travel. Of course, that is one really uh, transformational tra travel experience that you recommended. But what has been your most unforgettable tra travel experience so far? I would definitely pick the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Philippines was one of those destinations where I went there and I had this amazing experience. First of all, the water is pristine. It's made out of 9,000 different islands. And where was this? I went to a place called Palawan. Okay. In and, and of course, like I did three weeks across many different but islands. But Palawan stands out to you. Palawan was the most, I think, 
in my whole life, mm. that was the most beautiful, apart from the birth of my child, mm. I think that was the most beautiful experience I ever had. We were taken um, to a place which had caves and small hills around and we were on the river and it was really dark at night. Mm -hmm. I remember thinking, I'm here in nature mm. and it's and it's dark. Mm. There is no other noise I can hear apart from the 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 trees rustling their leaves. Oh, beautiful. And then I saw stars in the sky and I started slowly when we got deep inside the river I started s slowly seeing stars in the trees which were glow worms and then um, the boat uh, man said why don't you put your fingers into the water the water's nice and warm and when I when I put my fingers in you know what happened the water started glowing because it was bioluminescent water oh wow so and you were literally like in a galaxy of stars it was like for me it was like stars above stars on land and below me how better can life yeah, be it's beautiful so it yeah. was very very it was that my heart stopped and like it almost skipped a beat yeah. moment you know yeah. again uh, nature again an experiential yeah. you know trip there and that is what really stands out now of mm. course you know you just said that philippines stands out to you and has you have this beautiful experience that you can never forget uh, but do you have a destination that has always been your all-time favorite for me, um, throughout throughout the time that I was doing a lot of destination marketing campaigns, for me, uh, the destination that touched my heart the most was Switzerland. Mm. Yes, I know it's everyone's favorite. Yeah, <laughs> I, and I. But what was particularly special for you? I think I'm a, I'm a big believer that people make places. Uh huh. Big time believer, mm -hmm. and I'd say. You go to Switzerland and you wake up in the morning and you go downstairs and you say with a big smile, can you do this for me, please? Or can you help me find this? And they will always have a happy yes answer for you. Mm. And exactly just like the people, nature is breathtaking. Mm. Oh my gosh. Um, I mean, I've been it to is, remote yeah, places in Switzerland. Yeah. And... It's but just... I really like the fact that you said it's special because the people are so nice. Because, you know, when you talk about Switzerland, people don't really talk about the Swiss people. You know, they'll talk about the nature. They'll talk about the, you know, the luxury experiences. They will just talk about the cheese and the other beautiful things around. But I'm so glad that, you know, you're giving a shout out to the Swiss people and that they are also one of the nicest people around and that's why Switzerland stands out to you as being one of the most special places. So of course you know we have all these amazing experiences when we travel but you know things happen again when we travel there are travel bloopers. Sometimes you know you visit a place it doesn't leave a good taste in your mouth or things happen or you yourself kind of you know create a situation for yourself and then you realize oh I shouldn't have done that. Anything that stands out in your travel life that has you know remained is not a pleasant memory for you no travel bloopers and I have to be honest mm. but I did bloop one of my experiences okay. <laughs> <laughs> tell us about that oh my gosh I blooped out in Japan can okay. you believe <laughs> Japan didn't bloop on me okay <laughs> how did that happen uh, I'd never done never done uh, hostels mm. so I booked in Kyoto mm. uh, three nights in a ladies hostel I was like, I'm going to do this experience. I'm going to enjoy myself. And I, I convinced my daughter as well. She was like, yes, 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 let's do it. And so now we're coming in from, we're coming in from Osaka to Kyoto. Mm. And we're in the train. Yeah. And, uh, and now I'm starting to palpitate. I am getting stressed out. I'm like, oh my God, I've booked myself in a, a ladies' hostel, I don't know what to expect. I've never done this before. I see that I have to share the bathroom. Um, what what about privacy? I can see other beds are there in the same room. Uh, so it was like I, a dorm kind of a situation. Oh, yes, dorm. Yes, it okay. was like a dorm. Yes. Yeah, so, and it had one, two, three, four beds. Okay. Yeah, and two beds were look, overlooking the river. Oh, beautiful. And I was like, 
oh my gosh, I've never done something like this. So like, we've got 20 minutes left for the train to arrive at Hakone. I panic. I blooped. Mm. I booked myself on a four star and booked myself for two nights. And uh, I thought, okay, we can change, maybe go to another city and so on. But we had three nights anyways booked at the ladies' hostel or dorm. Mm. And so we braved it out and we did the last night there. And I have to tell you, I missed out. It was good. It was so nice. People were so lovely. So what was nice about it? Was it the community building that you experienced, meeting other people, the travel stories that you perhaps exchanged with those people? Or was it a mix of everything? It was so cute because we had like this this small little, like how the Japanese tables are, mm -hmm. you know, where you have yeah, to sit yeah. down. So sit the beds were down. also kind of like that. And then you had these cute little windows and you could look outside and oh, you could see nice. the Kyoto oh, River. Fantastic. Okay, amazing. Beautiful. Now, of course, you've, you've had so many experiences. You've traveled around so many different places and continents. But there must be something which you consider as a hidden gem. So what is mm. your hidden gem is something that we want to know. I went to this place called the Juta and Chauhi Pass. Mm -hmm. And where is that? This is in Georgia. Okay. So I... It's very accessible from here. Uh, Georgia is accessible. Yeah. This little place called Juta, it's really a hidden gem because you know what? You go through this drive, mm. which has the most beautiful, endless bed of flowers, as far as the eyes can see. Best, best time to go, I would suggest, is summers, mm -hmm. because winters, it would probably be inaccessible. So what is it? Is it a valley? Or? It's a valley. Okay. And this is kind of like a mountain, mm -hmm. which is part of the Caucasus Mountains. So you go over there to hike, and after a certain point... You don't have any um, roads. Oh. So you carry your stuff in your backpack. You hike up. Yeah. And you hike up about 45 minutes up. And then you get to this place, which is in the valley. Mm -hmm. And you have the most gorgeous view. And you're and I booked myself into a cabin. Mm -hmm. There are only two of those. Oh. And I, I was so lucky that I got one of them. Uh, basically, you're outside. Digital de detox. So is it's a valley, but it also has a little village, would you say? Or it just no, has these like cabins? Cabins and huts. In, in the wild, in, in the, the wilderness. Wild, yes. Oh. And the other way that you can go over there is perhaps uh, riding a pony. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. So it's Juta in Georgia. Juta in Georgia, yes. Fantastic. So you get to this place um, called Kazbegi. Mm -hmm. So it's between Kazbegi and Gudauri. Okay. And then you kind of like take this other route and it's it's amazing. Like well, That's brilliant. I haven't heard many amazing. people talking about this. I haven't heard anyone talk about this because people talk about Kazbeki and, you know, Tbilisi, but nobody, I've never heard Juta. So right here on this podcast, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah we, we're hiking. giving away, yeah. We're giving away this hidden gem. So, you know, again, you're the you're the travel expert. You just gave us this brilliant hidden gem in, in Georgia. And, you know, you know about the travel trends uh, around. So what do you think are the travel trends for 2024? Rejuvenate, recharge and restore. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Right. It's interesting you say that because, you know, travel trends doesn't necessarily mean a place anymore. You know, that's it's changed in the travel world today. You know, trends yeah. mean experiences. And just like you said, you know, recharge, rejuvenate and restore. And those are the experiences that uh, people are looking at. And oh, that's a trend, yes. right? Um, so, yeah, so you're saying that these kind of experiences is what is going to be, uh, you know, up there in 2024. Yes. That's brilliant. So <laughs> let's now move on to what you think is that one place uh, that people must definitely experience in 2024. I really do highly want to recommend okay um south africa oh nice the rainbow nation i love south africa do okay you? big shout out to south africa yes. then yeah yes why do i say that is because i felt so welcome mm. and the southern part especially mm. is absolutely gorgeous mm. the weather is completely different from perhaps the mindset and the perspective one would have about like south africa mm. you know from cape town down south 
And that was... And it is so beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Like, I remember when I went to South Africa, I actually said that I wish there were cameras inside my eyes and I could capture every frame because it was so... It is oh so gosh. beautiful, you know? It's so, so beautiful. So you you highly recommend South Africa and that's, that people should go and experience South Africa at least once in a lifetime and oh, why yes. not in 2024? Yes, absolutely. Right? Yeah. And I think maybe there's, there's a certain perception maybe that, mm. you know, oh, maybe it's... Maybe too, too hot away. or too far away. Right. Yeah. But it's not. Yeah. And you should definitely do it or you're mm. missing out in yeah. life. Yeah. So where are we going next? What is up next in your uh, bucket list? I had read about this experience and I'd love to do it sometime soon. Mm -hmm. It's called the Alaskan Expeditions on a cruise liner called Hurtigruten. It's about 168 years off expeditions that they've been doing wow so they do it in antarctica and they do it in alaska as well mm -hmm. you get to only do this during a certain period of the year mm -hmm. when it's summers and the days mm -hmm. are long you get to go to these traditional fish fishermen villages um who have like a hundred years of history 200 years of mm -hmm. history you get to see um small towns which were made popular because they they found gold first. Yeah, that's uh, that's going to be a really amazing experience. Uh, and then you get to like see nature on another level. I'm sure. Yeah. Now, I have to tell you one very interesting thing about this cruise liner. Mm. Yeah? It's called the Inside Passage. So there are different uh, Alaskan cruises. You've mm. got the northbound, you've got the southbound, and you've got the Inside Passage. When you do the inside passage, you get, when it is, if this is the globe, mm. get so close to Russia, it's almost a, a 55 mile uh, um, distance? distance between the two continents. So you literally get to the wow. northernmost bit of Alaska. That's incredible. That's when you realize that the earth is actually round. Right? Right? Yeah. Wow. So that's that's definitely one experience that's I would want to do. Beautiful, Sophia. So. I mean, I really almost went on that journey with you, even though you haven't been there, but you described it so beautifully. That was incredible. And I really hope you get to go on this expedition. And uh, I hope I get to come with you on that Let's because it together. <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> but this was so nice. Thank you so much. And I wish you all the best. And I hope you build many more new destinations and bring them to the limelight and let the world and the rest of the world see the world you know let everyone sure. you know everyone should really see every little corner of the world that they want to see and uh, thank you for bringing so many places into the limelight and um, you know inspiring people to travel to those destinations and thank you for joining us on the podcast today Thank you for having me. Thank you everyone for tuning in today. I hope our conversations have fueled your wanderlust and inspired you to explore the world in new and exciting ways. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and let us know what you thought of today's episode. Until the next time, happy travels and keep exploring.